Good evening and welcome to, the, to today's Compline service from St John's in Egham. Today is Tuesday the 30th of March. My name is Simon Fraser and I'm one of the Associate Ministers of the Church. Before we start the service, shall we just spend a few moments thinking about this particular week, this Holy Week, as we approach the cross and then Easter Day. Shall we just spend a few moments preparing our hearts? The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We now come to our time of confession together. As we think about the day that we've had, there'll be many things I hope that we can praise God for. But there may be things that we might regret where we haven't been at our best. A few moments of silence now to reflect on the day now past before we come to our time of confession together. We say our confession together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins. Time for amendment of life and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now come to our Compline hymn, which we say together. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Amen. Our reading this evening is from John's Gospel, and we are reading chapter 16, verses 16 to 24. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more. And then after a little while you will see me. At this some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. And Jesus saw that he wanted to ask them about this. So he has said to them, are you asking one another what I meant by saying when I said, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, you will grieve but your grief will be turned to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy, of her joy that her child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief. But I will see you again and you will rejoice. 
and no one will take away your joy. That day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have asked for, haven't, and have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Amen. Now Jesus has been telling his disciples how he is going to send the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit will guide them into all truth. Now Jesus knows what is to come. First his death on the cross, then his resurrection, and finally his return to his Father in heaven. He now starts to prepare his disciples. And in our passage he starts by saying, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. As we can see from our passage, this statement caused not a little confusion. But Jesus goes on, I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. Your grief, will, but your grief will be turned to joy. The disciples will weep and mourn. Indeed, they will be devastated. They will witness their Lord and Saviour being crucified to the delight of the religious leaders and the crowds while their world is falling apart. Yet in all this there is hope. In the end their grief will be turned to joy when Jesus beats the final enemy of death and by God's power is raised again to life. Jesus doesn't go into explicit details. He is just giving them enough so that they will be able to stand up under all the strain that is coming their way. We finish this section with Jesus telling them, in that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until, you have not, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. After Jesus has returned to God the Father, he will send his Holy Spirit and a new era will be ushered in and begin. But through the Spirit, they will have access to the Father and will petition him in and through the name of Jesus. Of course, this was all in the future. And these words of Jesus really only made sense later when they could look back on all that Jesus had said. Just some final thoughts about this passage. I don't know if it's the same for you, but at certain points in the year, I sometimes pause, perhaps at the beginning of a new year or on a birthday. It is a time to look back and also to look forward to what is yet to come. Have you ever wished that you would know exactly and with certainty what the future holds? I've come to the conclusion, and particularly through this passage, that it is for our own good that we don't know the future. If we were made aware of what we were going to face and the many trials that we might have in the future, I wonder how we would cope. It seems better to me that we face each trial as it comes along. And often when we look back on things, things that have happened in our lives, particularly those things that at the time were hard to bear, it seems to me that God always gives us sufficient grace to get through. Sometimes he has given me someone to journey, journey with through the hard times. And I thank God that he planted me in St John's Church in Egham. And to be surrounded by a, spe a very special family that has helped me through difficult times. And when Jesus spoke to his disciples, they didn't really understand what they were facing. And perhaps it's just as well. Ultimately, all our grief will be turned to joy when we meet our Heavenly Father face to face. In the meantime, may we support and care and love each other in the good times and in the hard times too. Amen. We now come to our expressions of faith which we can say together. Lord, you've always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor, today I believe. 
Lord, you've always given strength for the coming day. And I am weak. Today, I believe. Lord, you've always given peace for the coming day. And though of anxious heart, today, I believe. Lord, you've always kept me safe in trials and now tried as I am. Today, I believe. Lord, you've always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, Today, I believe. Lord, you've always lightened this darkness of mine. And though the night is here, today, I believe. And finally, Lord, you've always spoken when time is ripe. And though you be silent now, today, I believe. Save us, O Lord, while waking. And guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and the sleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and the sleep may rest in peace. We now come to our time of prayer together. Shall we pray? Our Father God, in these days approaching Easter, we think of all that Jesus did on our behalf, the supreme sacrifice that he made that we might be restored to you, to know forgiveness and your love and acceptance of all of us through and because of Jesus. May these days leading up to Easter be a time of contemplation and quiet reflection as we think of the time in history where Jesus, your only son, bore our guilt and shame. Father, we also thank you for all your goodness to us, especially for getting us through this last year. Although there have been times when life was difficult, we thank you for your sufficient grace to get us through each and every day. And for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who have helped me and many others through difficult times. Help us, we pray, as the days ahead unfold, to meet each challenge that comes our way. And where we can, may we be a blessing to others. Father, we give you thanks for all those who have worked so hard to keep us safe and well. May they know your blessing and our thanks. We remember all those who have lost loved ones over this last year and at other times too. May they, may they know your consolation and may it be ministered and meted through us. A pause for silent reflection now as we think and pray for those that we love and care for. to our private prayers. Father, we thank you that in times of struggle and hardship that we can turn to you and that you have gathered us together as a church, part of your global family, to love and care and support each other. Help us, we pray, to love you, to love each other and to love our community. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Amen. Now let us pray for our daily bread as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our service draws to a close. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. I am placing my soul and my body in thy safekeeping this night, O in thy safekeeping, O Jesus Christ. In thy safekeeping, O Spirit of perfect truth. The three who would defend my cause be keeping me this night from harm. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this night and in all the days ahead. It remains for me now to say good night and God bless.